what's up guys this is nazo here and we are back and this is the first episode of underworld evolution so for this episode we'll be talking about a guy named cyril beaker cyril beaker hails from cape town or rather he hailed from cape town and he was we can say he was an underboss or an underworld figure you can say he was an underworld figure he ran the securities in nightclubs in Cape Town. So Mr. Bika started off having a usual upbringing in the Cape and later on he even joined. Um, okay, growing up, Cyril Bika was a Taekwondo champion. Uh, is it Taekwondo or Karate? But one of them, the martial arts. He was a very quick learner and he was physical so it took him a very short time to attain the black belt um, in Cape Town. His brother says that he was, it took far shorter than most people for him to get the black belt which is a great achievement because the black belt is the pinnacle of uh, martial arts especially karate and taekwondo. So this guy <clears throat> As he grew up, he used to beat up uh, bouncers in clubs. Apparently, that's where he met a Russian guy named uh, Ulyaninsky. So this guy came to South Africa uh, with his parents, I think, when they were working in, in the mines or some form of industry. So wherever they met, he once saw Serebika beating up guys in the clubs. And that's when he approached him and said, okay, if you can do this, then you can actually be a bouncer. But apparently they ended up uh, bringing up the idea of nightclub securities. So this is where, from my research, this is where the nightclub business, uh, securities business actually started. So Mr. Beaker here had uh, some guys, he ganged up some guys, whom he rented out to nightclubs. Usually nightclubs have their own securities and you'll see them written staff or written security, the bouncers uh, and the securities inside the, the floor. Uh, but in this case, the nightclub owners had to find security from the outside. So when they refused, that is when people like Bika came around and forced them they forced they forced them to take their security so that is funny because this is a legally registered company that pays tax but then it gets its money by extortion so you will realize that okay it's better to take these guys than to have them cause a ruckus here and uh, chase away my customers so that is how it all started then as you know, whenever people make money, there are those that are going to be envious. So as it grew, they realized, uh, other people realized that this is big business and they tried to muscle in. And that is where I believe, that is where the nightclub security business got it wrong. The people wanted to muscle in. They did not sit down and blend the work. So Bika was having the largest share, the largest share of the rich net clubs, you know, the ones that you find in suburbs and the upper middle class uh, kind of areas. That's where he had it. And then there are other net clubs in the ghettos and in the uh, poorer areas where you had uh, some guys also applying the same tactics and uh, asking for protection fee. So this protection fee is actually not something new. It happens everywhere in all forms of criminal industries in South Africa. But for the nightclubs, it's, it's something that was maybe we can say awkward because these are actually registered companies who work on this. So anyway, <clears throat> this is how Cyril Bika operated. And this is where I believe he met people like um, Colin Boyson and his brother donkey boyson which we are going to talk about later on 
but i think that is where this person met them and this is where it gets fun the people who actually wanted bika dead because of what they wanted from uh, the makisha that he had where he had muscled in they actually started saying he's a criminal informant to the saps and uh, the nia so on one side they wanted to kill him and on the other side they're spreading rumors which we don't know if they are true or not because even some members of the police force say that actually uh, mr cyril Bika was an informant it's not something that is an official word but they say it so looking back uh mr Bika had one guy that is called um nasif modak now nasif modak we now know him as one of the major players in the securities but early on he had no actual uh, connection uh, uh, to the uh, nightclub security except being a known associate of uh, Sarah Beaker. Nasif was actually doing something different in uh, retail business. He only came to to the public eye or rather came to the securities business when Sarah Beaker was assassinated or rather he was taken out. Yeah, same thing I think. So this guy was killed when he left uh, Jerome Donkey Boyson's house. So Jerome is someone we're going to cover also. But in this case, we wanted to highlight that the people actually waited for him to leave uh, Donkey Boyson's house and then they were able to gun him down. By then, he was no longer living in Cape Town. He just came frequently to check on his business. He was living in um, Pretoria. Pretoria or Dwebeck, but he was in Houghton, where I think you also had some, some form of business, but we haven't found out yet. So this is what we know so far about Cyril Beaker. He had a lot of connections in the criminal underworld. Now, the one thing that um, being a security company at a nightclub exposes you to the illegal activities that go on in the nightclub. So most likely people who run security they are going to have connections with people who run drugs so as we go on we're going to see how this world uh, these worlds are, are interconnected so this is what we have so far on Sarah Beaker we'll continue to read more and research more about this but I'll link a few books to these people's uh, people where I've read where people actually talked about uh, the criminal underworld of uh, Southern Africa, especially the Cape Town uh, securities. So I'll link a few books here and you go and check those books. You can buy them off Amazon. You can get them at takealot.com anywhere, but just read one or two of those books. So tune in. Next time we'll be talking about someone else. Uh, I think maybe it's time to talk about uh, Jerome Donkey Boyson. So remember to suggest people you want us to cover and hit the subscribe button and ring the bell next time.